Before I start, I just wanted you to pay attention to this award here. Adaptivist is a winner of our Cloud Solution Partners for last year. So if you need your migration partner, you are definitely in the right hands. So talk to people around, they will definitely help you. And I wanted to start by introducing our panel expert. They are going to walk you through the ins and outs of cloud migrations and will be, of course, ready to answer all your questions. Uh, as you can see, we have only three people on the stage. Alex, unfortunately, cannot be with us in person, but he sent us some videos, so he will definitely contribute to that valuable conversation. And I wanted to start the introductions from our hosts, so I will not follow the... I will not follow the, the slide here. I will start with Phil, actually, who is representing Scriptrunner. And Phil is sort of a walking legend, if I might say so. <laughs> He's not only an encyclopedia of everything that Scriptrunner is. If you don't know what Scriptrunner is, it's an amazing product. And any, any time you think about integration, automation, customization scripts, it's definitely your place to go. And Phil will be giving the Scriptrunner point of view today. Welcome, Phil. Thank you. Um... I feel, I feel like I'm the imposter in the room, looking around at some of the other faces who are here. I think I may not know everything about Scriptrunner, but I know which people in the audience and which people in our team to go and point and get them to actually answer that question. So yes, I, I can get the right people to the right conversation at the right time. I'm definitely not the person who knows everything in that respect. It's true, I might have misspoke here. Scriptrunner is an, is an enormous, product, so I don't think there's a person who knows everything about Scriptrunner, but definitely Phil can direct you to a person. There are a, couple, there are a couple of folks who do try, and they do yeah. a really good job. Uh, but what is it you have to, from the FB of Humble, you need your people who shout out for you, so yeah, I will certainly say the, the Scriptrunner team as a whole, I'm forever shouting out and pointing people in their direction. Thanks. Thanks um, so. Yeah, so who am I? Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a principal customer success advocate. I work with lots of customers across the globe, based up in Suffolk. I do lots of stuff up there. But I don't just work with Scriptrunner. I don't just work with the Adaptive products or the Atlassian products. It's always about making sure the right thing's there for the customer. So that's a very quick introduction to what I do. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. There's always weird posts that I put up. Um, what have I had recently? Me doing STEM outreach at music festivals in Spain. A little wren chick sitting on my laptop in the garden one day. So don't expect the usual sales pitch type posts. What you see on mine are all weird and weird, varied. But hopefully they're just some things that will make the day interesting. So there you go. Thank you. And now off to Abby. Abby is representing Collecti. Collecti is one of the adaptivist group brands. And for those of you who maybe don't know Collecti, if you are a script runner user, Collecti is your place to go. If you want to make the most out of, uh, sorry, Confluence users, if you want to make the most out of Confluence, definitely Collecti will uh, and Collecti team will help you not only with your work management but also knowledge management. They are also on the mission to save the knowledge workers. So if you're a knowledge worker, Abby is definitely a person to to talk to. Before I go to Martin, I wanted to uh, say a few words about Alex or AZ. Alex is the VP of Strategic Business Development at Tempo Software. We had a presentation from Tempo earlier today. When I think about Tempo, I think portfolio management, time, uh, time sheets and time tracking and enterprise. Tempo Software is one of our strategic partners next to Adaptivist. So definitely your, your place and your partner to go when you would like to enhance our Atlassian products. And last but not least, Martin, who will be representing the Atlassian POV here in the cloud migration discussion. So I think without further ado, we can start. And at first, we wanted to take a little bit wider approach and just talk about the migration landscape today and ask our panelists, what trends do they see in the migration space? I will start by showing you a video from Alex. As I said, unfortunately, he cannot be with us today, but he will be in spirit and digitally. Hello, everyone. My name is AZ. I'm with Tempo Software. Uh, I'm here digitally today. I wasn't able to join you. I'm glad I could fill in and, and help with this panel. So let's talk about 
cloud migration and, and what the landscape looks like today? Because there are some trends in this space. So, so to begin with, let's let's reframe migration in terms of transformation. And in technology, transformation is constant, happens all the time. Think about where we've come from in the past 30, 40 years. We've had mainframes, modems, um, the advent of desktop computers. Now we're on gigabit speed in in the uh, internet. Uh, we're doing everything through the cloud. There's been a great transformation and it'll continue. It, it'll never stop. Um, but one of, the, one of the things about transformation is it means innovation and we can drive new value. So we can find ways to provide value um, as, as solution partners and as marketplace partners and provide better solutions and apps for our customers. So one of the things that Tempo thinks about, you know, when we're looking at the landscape is it's an opportunity to build better apps, to build better solutions. You know, you think about feature parity, if you're moving from on-premise Jira to uh, cloud Jira, it's, it's not necessarily feature parity from one to the other, but solution parity, and it's an opportunity to be better. Um, so that's definitely one of the trends that we're seeing in the marketplace. Another is, it's a great opportunity for us to provide support, guide expectations and help customers get there. Because in cloud, there's some things that change. There's different requirements. There's security, there's compliance, there's performance. Um, think about it, we have the Atlassian Trust Center now and all the marketplace vendors, we're rolling out our own trust centers. Uh, it's a requirement for us to be ISO and SOC compliant. We need to have secure coding practices. I mean, these are things that we, we've had in the past, but now there's a shared responsibility now that we're in the cloud. We've got performance SLAs that we share with Atlassian. So the, the trends are that there's just a lot of value. There's new ways that we're doing business. We're evolving our business. That's just some perspective on the migration landscape. Let me pass it back to the panel. Thank you. Thank you. I think it was a great intro. Uh, and I think security, compliance, performance will be the words you will hear a lot today. So, oh, I see Phil is ready. Maybe Phil, would you like to uh, add some additional comments to what already as you said? I think one of the things that we need to remember in all of this is business value. So a little bit of audience participation. How many people here learned to ride a bike when they were a kid? How many of them still ride that same bicycle with the stabilizers that they learned to ride on to go down the shops today? Nobody? No. Our tools evolve and our tools change. Many of us might still ride bikes. I know there's some people in the audience who are quite competitive bike riders and, and do many miles in, in that respect. But you wouldn't do it on the, the, bike, the little tricycle or the bike with stabilizers that you learn first of all. So what happens with our Atlassian tool sets is a little bit like we often cut our teeth and we create things, we get them working. Great, we've got it working, we move on, we do bigger and better things. We get the racing bike and that's there. But we don't ever throw away that learning bicycle. It's still there, hidden away in the deep recesses of our instance. So when we come to a migration, it's a really good opportunity to actually stop, look at the processes, look at the methods that you're working with, and say, are they delivering business value? Is the business value that they deliver the maximum it could deliver? Is it delivering something that actually doesn't add value anymore? and actually stops people from being able to do the right things. So what you want to be doing is, don't think of the migration as taking everything that you've ever learned and everything that you've ever done, but taking forward those things that add value, and more importantly, thinking about how you take those things forward to enable you to deliver even more value in the future. Thank you, Phil. Abby, would you like to add something from the collective question? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, we look at the landscape as it is now, and you look back to kind of pre-COVID, and we are in a different, you know, a very different space. You know, so if you look, if you take technology out of the equation, you know, more and more people now are remote workers. You know, that's become more of a norm, and COVID escalated that. But one of the things it did is it made businesses take stock and look at how quickly and efficiently they could operate. And a lot of them suddenly realise that having that server in a room, in an office where people can't get to because you're all at home, put them at risk. And I think for me, 
that's helped make the cloud solution even more relevant in today's market. And I think that's probably where people have, they are taking stock, they're looking. And whilst we in our personal lives have also took stock and thought, you know, I like being a remote worker. You know, I like being able to work from home or having the ability to come into the office. And I think that also has the impact then on technology that they need, you know, we need systems that you can communicate globally. You know, and yes, I am the outlier of the Confluence one in the corner. Um, and Confluence does that fantastically well. You know, that is the system where you can all engage and work together. And at the best one in the world, as Phil said, we're not all riding the old bike. We want the new, the shinier, you know, we, we said, is it 20 years now that Apple revolutionized how people expect to work and technology to be? And I think that's a big part of where cloud comes in, you know, the better UI, the, you know, is my business one that wants to look at infrastructure or, you know, am I a bank? My, my core business is banking. Do I really want the onus of having our own, you know, all the world around us is changing. So do we want that hardware back in the office or do we want to hand it over to experts? People have built and spent, I would hate to even think how much Alassian would probably spend on their cloud environment. You know, it's the best of breed. They've got the best people looking after it. It's, you know, if this was your security, would you want it in your house or would you want it in a safe? And I think that for me is where the world's changed, technology's changing with it, and we've changed. And, you know, and our requirements have changed. And I think cloud represents those changes as well. Thank you. Martin? Um, yeah, I think like pretty much in line with uh, what it was shared before. Uh, when you were talking, I looked at my phone just because I wanted to check uh, a percentage uh, that is uh, actually in the Atlassian website saying that uh, most uh, all customers that move to cloud uh, report that, um, I'm, I'm sorry, 51% of them report that uh, they can get IT teams more capacity to work on more relevant things, like uh, instead of having to manage like passwords and uh, stuff like that. I think another number uh, that uh, caught my attention is, uh, yeah, the fact that um, I think around 40% of customers that we interview after the migration said that they uh, find more easy to make uh, data-driven uh, decisions just because of the easy, uh, the easy ways that we have to report in cloud and like the more interconnection between instances. So uh, I think there is a lot of numbers that validate that, uh, yeah, if we focus on outcomes, cloud may be a better solution for a, a lot of businesses. And uh, yeah, I, I think also from the automation perspective, like it opens up really a lot of uh, opportunities for, for customers. So I, I think in terms of trends, like what I see is customers, uh, yeah, focusing more on outcomes as well. What are the, the, the benefits rather than replicating that old bike from the past? Thank you. Yeah, I think we can all agree that the only constant here is change and the cloud transformation is already happening. And it's important for, for you and your businesses to understand what business value you want to have in your cloud environment, because it will probably not be one on one. But uh, this is also a very good moment for you to rethink your processes, your teams, and try to maybe shape your, uh, your operations in a little bit different way. Um, the cloud journey can be a complex one. There is a lot of factors to consider. Some of them were mentioned before. And there is no to the same cloud journeys from what, I, what I've seen. Do you have any best practices that you would like to share with our audience? I will start with AZ again, and then we will go again with the front. Hey everybody, it's AZ again from Tempo Software. So the question is, cloud migrations can be a complex journey. There's different aspects to consider. How do you ensure that these aspects are all integrated into a migration strategy? You know, what might be some examples? So. When we're thinking about migrations, you know, as I said earlier, it's a transformation. We're going from, in this case, on-premise to cloud. Well, one of the there's two things that change pretty dramatically when you do that. One is there's a shifting or a balance of costs between on-premise and cloud. The, the economics change incredibly. You're you're moving from, hey, do I need to have hardware support? And do I need specific skills to manage that hardware? To having everything in the cloud where it's like, oh, we're, we're shifting, you know, there could be increased investment that's needed in software, less on the hardware side. 
um, but my skills change too. So the business econ economic shift when you migrate to cloud from on-premise. You know, another thing that we have to consider is what I call shared responsibility, security, compliance, performance. You know, a lot of that, if you're on-premise, is tied to your hardware and the staff you have and the security of the building where you house everything. Now we're in the cloud. What are the skills that are required for security, compliance, or performance? You know, that is now becoming shared with the different vendors and the customer all together. We're all responsible uh, for these things. We need to make sure that we have a performance environment in which value is delivered and our customers can get the job done. You know, some of the things that we think about, again, uh, you know, when these migrations happen is, you know, what's the experience of a migration like? A lot of these migrations take place over a weekend, which means a customer, they might hit 4 p.m. on a Friday, People go home and that's when the migration starts and they need to be up and running by 8 a.m. on Monday. So that's, you know, it's not quite 72 hours. It's, you know, 48, 50, 60 hours. All of this has to be done. So, you know, we also want to think about how do we support our customers uh, over the weekend? How do we enable them to feel confident that we're there for them? In 2023, just to give you one statistic, Tempo supported on call 995 migrations. Super high uh, success rate with those. A lot of them were all done automatically. We didn't have to do a thing, but we supported 995 customers as they moved to cloud in 2023. So those are some of the things to consider on your journey to cloud. You know, tuck those back, tuck those into your uh, pocket. Now back to the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Martin, maybe we can start with you this time just to share some best practices uh, from Atlassian and just to give some tips how to implement all of these aspects into customer strategy. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, something that immediately comes to mind is uh, the Magic, uh, Magic Pi framework that uh, Atlassian works with. Uh, so basically the M is for migration strategy, migration plan, create your plan, something that is according to your company strategy. Uh, the second, the A is for apps and integrations. So think what are the apps that you're using, what is available on cloud, what brings the most value, how do you migrate those? Um, the G is for growth and yeah, scalability basically. Like are you planning to grow? Uh, how many users are you going to have in like the next six months, like thinking ahead? Um, I is for um, identity management, which is going to work differently in cloud than it works in uh, data center or server. Uh, so that, that will need a little bit more thinking as well. And finally, the C is, um, I don't remember what C is. <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I, will, I will share it with you later. But yeah, I think like those, those are the, the, the main uh, the main ones that come to mind. Thank you, Martin. Uh, Abby, would you like to share? Yeah, um, I think for me, preparation is key. Um, you know, I can use the analogy of if you were about to move house, to me, it's quite a similar thing. So if you were moving house, you would evaluate where you want to go, what's best for you. So as part of that is looking at what you have now, what do you need? Do we need to clean it up? Do we have to take everything with us? In the same way you would if you were packing your house up, you would get rid of things that are maybe a bit older. You would maybe look at what your new house is going to need and maybe pick new furniture. And I think a similar thing would take place with your migration is that you've got to prepare, you need to assess. You need to decide, you know, are you going to take everything as is? You know, do you use, use the migration application tool? Are we going to take everything with us and then evaluate in cloud? Or strategically, would it make more sense that we, we clear up first? We look at our spaces, what's needed. We look at our apps, what needs to come forward. And I think a big part of that is kind of assessing, testing, definitely run through a test migration. And then think about the fact that the cloud is a new place that you're going to. You know. Is there more value in looking at what cloud can offer? So you assess what you have now, and you might find that not all your applications look the same in the cloud. And that might be fine, because what you're looking to then do is you're looking to improve. You, know, you want that new look and feel. 
And as part of having that new look and feel, perhaps your apps look a lot better in the cloud. So I think for me, think of it like your house move, clear house, assess, look at your migration strategy. And from a partner perspective, I would say, you know, involve people who specialize in that. So, you know, involve us, whether it be Collecti, whether it be Script Runner or Tag as a service. You know, this is kind of our bread and butter. This is what we do in the same way that you might be in banking or in any other industry is you specialize in what's great for you, but come let us help you do what we do best as well. I could just repeat what they said, but I'm going to take a slightly different tack. In your preparation, think about what the barriers are. Think about what, what are going to stop you from migrating. And then think about how you address those. I'm going to talk about two very different ones. I'm going to put to one side all the technical barriers. I'm going to talk about one which is business complexity. Do you truly understand the business processes that are being supported by your tooling? Do you have owners of that complexity who know and understand what is the true business value that is delivering? Because if you don't have those, when you come to do the testing that was referred to, what are you testing against? What benchmark are you using to measure success? It's always an interesting challenge. A number of places I go and they go, oh, we've just got to take everything because we don't actually know what it does. And it's like, well, if you don't know what it does, how can you test to make sure it's doing the right thing? How can you make sure that you're delivering the right thing in the future if all you're saying is, I'm going to take across whatever I've got now and I don't truly understand it? The second aspect which I'm going to bring in is a person thing. We, we talked a lot about tools, we talked a lot about processes and methods, but we have people. And one of the biggest barriers to migrations that I come across time after time is people. And I'll give you one little example there, which is people who have got a lot of emotional investment in the current tooling whether that be they've built their career on on-premise support, they've built all the work, magic workflows that support stuff, they've written all the scripts that run in the background. Their entity, their cells, are built, their worth as they judge it, is built on that emotional investment. For them, that change to go to a different platform is incredibly threatening. Now, they may not say that that's the reason, and be quite vocal about it, but what they will do is they will put barriers in the way. Oh, it doesn't do this. How do I make it do that? Not necessarily tying that back to a business need, but just basically going, I've solved this problem once, I don't want to have to solve it again. And that's something where we need to encourage people to put their egos, their emotional investment at the door as they come into the conversation and leave it behind. And that's something which is often a barrier to migrations that people don't even look at because they look at it purely as a technical challenge of how do I move from A to B. Yeah, I just wanted to add, because when Phil was talking about uh, blockers and like common themes, I remember what the C was, and the C was compliance, which I shouldn't have forgotten that one. Uh, but yeah, that's also something that we find a bit like a taboo topic and like we are super open to discussing with customers because Atlassian is working really a lot uh, along with our partners into make sure that we have clear information where your data is going, where it's being stored, um, all the different uh, certifications that are possible. We are uh, looking for ways to present those clearly to customers. So uh, that, that is something that uh, if you have any questions, uh, definitely reach out to Atlassian or to a, a solution partner or even a marketplace partner because we are uh, working every day to, to have that uh, compliance conversation and you know, even get better in the future. Yeah. I think I'll add to that and say that in the last kind of six months, I've had a lot of compliance conversations. And the one thing I would probably say is think of it early because what you don't want is it to become a blocker to the move that you haven't crossed all those T's and dotted your I's. I think it's, it's quite a complex thing, particularly if you're a financial institution or you, know, you, you have those data concerns. You know, they are valid, you need them answering, but the sooner you address them, the better I think the migration will go through. Because there's nothing more frustrating to 
you're all ready to go, but you need compliance to sign off. <laughs> Thank you. And suddenly we see it pretty often, I have to say. Uh, and what AZ said before, it, it is our shared responsibility here. It starts with Atlassian and our products being compliant and making sure that your data is safe, then extending, of course, to our, uh, our partners and their products. But also, we, we always advise customers to start as soon as possible and during the preparation phase, just making sure that that solution that you are aiming to, to go to is indeed aligned with your company requirements. By the way, I love the examples and all the metaphors and Abby made me feel a little bit bad because I moved to a new house a year ago and I still have unpacked boxes in my attic. So I think I, I know what I'm going to do this weekend. I, I was waiting for the last moment. I said, okay, that, that's... I feel really exposed now, <laughs> and I feel like I really have to do something with it. Okay, I can make you feel a lot better. I've just helped my mum move. She had 60 years of things that were still stored from when she'd made her previous move in boxes in the garage that I found when I came to help her move. So if you've only just moved and you've still got boxes that are not unpacked, you've got a way to go to beat me mum. Yeah, but my plan is now not to log into them because I assume if I didn't need all the things for a year, I would just probably just get rid of them. Sorry for that. Uh, uh, we are going slowly moving to our last question. Um, so to wrap things up, I wanted to ask our panelists, what are the key takeaways that they would like you to, to take with you? There is, of course, a lot, and there's a lot of steps in the migration journey. And in fact, it doesn't matter where you are in your migration journey today, whether you're on data center and not considering it today, or you're planning, or maybe you've moved to cloud and you just want to optimize your environment. I think the most important is to, to find your partner, your migration partner, whether it's Atlassian or, or a solution partner, and, and discuss all of it. So I am going to now... Uh, ask again, maybe Phil, so. you already have your microphone, just to share some takeaways and things people you would like people to remember after today's panel. I'm an old guy. The people, process and tools mantra still applies. Take the people with you on the journey, build the processes and follow the processes repeatedly, test and make sure the tools are aligned with delivering business value. And I'll keep it as simple as that. Think about the people, think about the process you're going to follow and what you're going to implement going forward and think about how the tools support you. If you stick to those three basics, you're not going to go far wrong. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Can't disagree. <laughs> I'll have to go next. Um, I totally agree. And I think people is a very important thing because I think people do fear change. Everybody does, and having a big change in your work life that's going to affect your day-to-day -day job is a big fear of people. But I think it's part of the migration strategy that if you bring your users in and they understand, so they understand the business reasons of why you're doing it, that it's not just change for change's sake, that they too have some training and some input so that they get to see how the cloud's going to look, so the fear is a little bit less if they have a part, so whether... For me, if you're looking at Confluence, content is key, really. And everyone's going to fear that their content is going to break. So I think as well as preparation, 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 because I think any migration, that is. I mean, back in my day, it was all seven Ps of without proper planning. <laughs> we won't do the next bit, but bad preparation. You can swap your P in there. Um, so yeah, plan, test, but think of the people, think of including them in, and things like bring all the support you can get. You know, reach out to the app providers, and I know that we might not be the critical part of the migration, but we might be the part that the users are keen to have. So you know, train them for the cloud. Don't just assume that they'll just get on with it and they'll know, because I think that's that's the part that kind of is key, that you've got to think of your outcome and going forward and constantly evolving, really, with the cloud. That first element yeah, of the new environment is so important. 
to set the scene, which is quite important. That first hour in your new environment is such an important time period to set the scene for how people are going to treat that environment going forward. If their first experience is a poor one or a bad one in some way, it will set that seed right from that point forward. So you've got to think about what are you going to astound and amaze them with rather than what are they going to be disappointed with in that first hour. Preparing them for that. Having a test environment that they've already gone in and explored and seen the different user interface can help just break down that if they're on that first hour. That's very true. Yeah, I think I um, pretty much agree with everything that was said. Um, I, I think maybe in terms of uh, something that I, I think would be useful to know as well is that I think most people, when they think about a cloud migration, they think about replicating like one-to-one -one what they already have in, in the past. And that is a possibility for some, but maybe also this uh, migration can represent an opportunity to do things a bit different. So. Uh, I like the comment of like in involving people, like have a test environment, think, okay, what we are doing before, is that really the right way to do it? Maybe we can improve things and have something that's a bit different. And uh, yeah, I think to, to do this exercise, uh, it could be really valuable. Yeah, it obviously will require a lot of work and housekeeping. And the good thing is that there is people there to help, like uh, solution partners, uh, marketplace partners, uh, Atlassians, uh, custom migration managers, uh, so I would say if you're starting one of these bigger projects and you have a large user base, we will definitely advise to reach out with some experts that have done it before. And now it's been a while since this uh, cloud first uh, or cloud migration started. So I think all of us are getting a, a lot more experience and we have a, a lot more to share. Uh, but what, what do you think, Alicia? Do we come for anything from you? In terms of takeaways, I think uh, I already said it, but the shared responsibility part is extremely important. And I know uh, we are right now in the transformation, so it is already happening. So basically, it's just a matter of when, not if, according to me, that, that it happens to your, uh, in your organization, whether for the entire organization or just for certain departments. Uh, from a lot of reasons, from the business perspective, from the scalability performance perspective, but the, the most important aspect for me and from my experience is security, privacy, compliance. That's something I'm going to stress a lot because, as Abby mentioned, we see it over and over again that it's becoming a, a step in the journey that is very difficult to overcome. So as soon as you plan to move to cloud or your teams are signaling, maybe it's time for us, start by making that research reach out to your compliance officers at your organization, see if that solution will be suitable for you, for your business needs, and for the complexity that you might already be in. And I wanted to close today's panel with uh, smart, wise words from AZ. So I'm going to uh, play the video, and we will have time for some questions from the audience if you have any or you can always reach out to us, uh, whether on LinkedIn, uh, we can uh, share our, our profiles as well, or we can just have a chat here whenever you have any questions around cloud migration. So, off to AZ. It's AZ one more time, again from Tempo Software. So the question this time is, hey, cloud migrations, they're not just a one size fits all process. What are some key takeaways that you can apply to your own cloud journeys. Well, I've got three pieces of advice to, to, to consider. So one is invest in automated migration tooling. Um, there's the JCMA, you've got Adaptivist Script Runner. Think of using automated migrations. It is simple. And these are tools that work. They help you get from point A to point B. So you can really focus on your business. That's number one. Number two, think about migration support early in the process. Get all your partners and vendors involved and get their buy-in. And a lot of times they're gonna be, wanna be there to support you. Earlier, I had mentioned weekend support. That's key because there's a lot of, lot of big mid-market enterprise customers. They're doing their migrations over the weekend. We'll be there for you. 
Um, that's super important because you think about it, you're migrating your JIRA instance, you're migrating your apps, get those to the new environment, however that may be, whatever automatic tooling you're using, but just know we'll be there for you. And, and lastly, think about the shared responsibility. When it comes to security, when it comes to compliance, when it comes to performance, from a vendor standpoint, th these are things that we've invested heavily in. So while you, you the customer, may have you know, controlled all of this 100% in your on-premise environment, we're there to help you with this in the cloud. We know it's a shared responsibility. We're in this together. Those are some of my takeaways. Back to the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you. So yes, we are in this together uh, and we are always happy to, to support you. Are there any questions from the audience? Anything that you would like to ask, clarify, or maybe discuss whether, or you just discuss your specific situation that you might be in right now? Yeah. Right then. I take this first. Yeah, I'll the whale. You all looked at me. <laughs> but yeah, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. Well, hopefully, you're not trying to retrofit your metrics. What you're actually doing is you're looking at things that you thought were going to improve. So it could be time to resolution, it could be quality of code. It could be quality of documentation. It could be number of support tickets that deflected. These are all realistic metrics that you should already be considering before you do that move because you want to make sure that those metrics do not decline. You want to make sure that the new service is at least as good as what you had before and ideally much better. And you should know what the metrics are that are important to your business. So I'm not going to say that there is one a one-size-fits-all for every organization metric. Adoption, usage are often key units of measurement, but sometimes it can actually be that things just are done easier, they're done quicker. That could be a simple unit of measurement. It could be it's more accessible and people are able to access the information in a more ready form. They reduce the number of telephone calls that you take on a help desk. I'm not gonna say one metric. I would look at what is important to the business, what is the balance of metrics that are important to the business, how do you measure those before the move and how do you measure them after the move and how do you track that trend and that change. Thank you Phil. Yeah, I just, just wanted to add one thing. It, it all depends on your teams and whether you want to increase the team productivity, collaboration, the, the speed the call is shipped. As Phil said, it, it depends on your team metrics and then to see whether it also makes sense to replicate them in the cloud environment, if it's going to be exactly the same or slightly different process, but there is no one formula that you can apply to all organizations and teams because all of them hopefully operate independently and then are responsible for what they are producing or what they are doing and then they have, the, and then they measure the metrics differently. Yeah, I think I'd echo that. I think as part of a migration strategy, you would have your own list of business outcomes of what you want to achieve. And for each business, they, make, they, they will be different. So as long as you can tick that box that you've achieved what you set out to do, so whether that is for efficiency, for people, for process, you know, reducing your systems, reducing apps, you know, whether that all comes down, I suppose, at the end of the day to cost, but a lot of it will be whether you people are happy in the cloud, whether they then are going forward to making their life easier there, so they're, they're more efficient, they're working better, they're communicating. Um, and yeah, down to whatever you kind of started at the beginning, you would look to make sure you've ticked those boxes off, because I think that's the, the key measure for any business, is understanding their outcome, and then make, being able to make sure they've met them. So let's just put that into some reality. You've measured the number of tickets on a support desk. 
And after migration, the number of tickets has gone up, but the speed of resolution has gone down. Is that a good metric or a bad metric? Are you seeing an improvement in service because more people are raising tickets, but they're actually being cleared off quicker? Could it be that there is an automation in there that is actually closing tickets as soon as they're raised because it's actually picking up and going, I'd recognise that type of ticket, therefore the answer is this, here's the answer, thank you very much, go away. Your end user experience might actually not be very good with something like that because the nuances of the ticket that they raised may have been lost. So just taking raw numbers without understanding the context is often only part of the story and you need to think about what is that user experience and how do you measure that user experience to be able to say we have a better user experience because and these are the things that support it. So be wary of using bold raw numbers without understanding the context is my warning note there. Thanks. Right, I think we have no more questions. We'll be around, so just have a chat if you would like to know a little bit more. Thank you so much to all our panelists. So uh, it was a really great discussion, very valuable insights.